Hello, welcome to House and Home Chat Real Estate Real Talk with Dina and Chris. I'm Chris Breitenbach. And I'm Dina Mathis. Welcome to our program as we're quickly heading into 2022. The new year is always a good time to revisit policies and also to strategize about new opportunities in the coming year. So in today's program, we're going to focus on homeowners insurance and look at homeowners policies. Um, It's a really important topic that we're excited to bring to you and we want to make sure that you're all adequately covered. And we're going to look at those policies and how they may differ, um, how a, an owner occupied policy may differ from an investment policy. So we'll be um, talking about all of that here shortly. Yeah, exciting. Actually, very, very exciting and, and interesting information and very valuable to all of you. Um, a bit later in our program during our real talk session, Dean and I are going to give you a snippet of what that market is doing right now and how things are trending. So, but before we get to that, we have a guest with us today, Nick Bogan of Senior Flaherty Insurance here in Mason, um, but all across the tri-state. And he's going to share some valuable information with all of us about homeowners policies for both homeowner occupied and investment properties. Welcome to our program. No, thanks for, thank you for letting me come. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we're glad to have you. Thank yeah, you. The market's changing quite a bit, whether it's COVID or, oh, yeah. or you name it. Oh, um, yeah. You got to be fast. <laughs> you do have to be fast and super flexible. Exactly. Um, insurance carriers are really looking at uh, re- replacement value because construction costs are going up so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's kind of a, a, one of the big buzzwords right now is insurance to value. Oh, nice. Uh, people okay. are, you know, the market obviously is very hot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're getting a loan or whatever the case may be, sometimes the replacement value of your house may be lower than the market value. Well, that's a really good point. Oh, that <laughs> yeah. is a good point. No, we, yeah. we run yeah. into that yeah. all yeah. the time where yeah. um, I'm, I'm sure you guys run into it at closing where yeah. somebody has to bring more cash, or whatever the case is. So <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> we get banks calling us all the time saying, hey, we're loaning X amount. We need you to get the coverage up higher and so it's getting increasingly more challenging for us to justify those values when we look at a cost per square foot we Mm -hmm. say oh man we feel like it's 140 dollars a square foot to rebuild and they the bank says no it's 160 based on the values it's it's really tricky right now you know that's interesting i never even thought about that every carrier has a different flavor of vanilla they have software that they use to help Mm -hmm. determine the replacement value and so it's really more of an art than a science. Okay. Um, and so there's some there's a little bit of flexibility, right? have, and I'm sure each of you have this coverage on your policy. There's an endorsement called guaranteed replacement cost. Yes. Yes. Where if I'm dead wrong as an agent, let's say I undershared your home by a certain percentage, okay. you have usually 25 percent more. There's like a buffer. There's a buffer, okay. and I would say that's okay. you know insurance for insurance agents. Um, but nowadays with construction costs, yeah skyrocketing mm-hmm. it's yeah, going to be really yeah. interesting what happens in the next 16 months good to know um every policy you buy typically has an inflation factor mm-hmm. built into it okay. so it's kind of like compounding interest if your house is insured for two hundred thousand, mm-hmm. next year it'll be insured for 210 they just bump it up but now the costs are exceeding those mm-hmm. built-in inflation mm-hmm. yeah, cards yeah mm-hmm. so there's going to be a natural gap that happens over time so it's going to be really dicey what happens uh how insurance carriers are going to attack that going forward. So so it's all kind of being looked at right now. Oh, it is. And everybody's taking a slightly different approach to it. Okay. Um, so as agents, we have to be super vigilant when okay. it comes to, you know, you have those where you're buying or refinancing. Like we really have to look at all of the components mm-hmm. to say, hey, are we are we properly, you know, covering this particular right. family for what their needs are? So, right. Um, yeah, but I love I love what I do. I've been in insurance for yeah, 20 years. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your background. I started like as yourself. an underwriter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. 2000, I, I worked for Cincinnati Insurance as an underwriter, mm-hmm. which is just, you know, pushing paper, reading contracts. And mm-hmm. I always say being an underwriter is kind of like building cars and then selling cars. Mm-hmm. So it kind of gives me a slightly <laughs> yeah. different approach yeah. to mm-hmm. selling insurance. Um, well, I'm sure it helps you in the selling aspect because you 100%. know because you understand what's going on. Yeah. What at, at, I mean, you guys at. read contracts yeah. all the time and how important that mm-hmm. is in your profession, how that is kind of an overlooked service mm-hmm. where you guys can find things very similar for me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I love what I do. I think, you know, I read uh, 
all the Little House in the Prairie books to my yeah. to my yeah. daughters yeah. in particular. And I love the the doctor that goes like door to door back in the yeah. day. And I feel like insurance is is kind of similar in that. I think it's a really noble profession. I love it because mm -hmm. we get to come alongside families and some like literally the darkest times yeah. in their lives. Right. So yeah, that's a good we've point. had some really so challenging true. losses. Uh, literally, I know we're gonna get to investment properties, mm -hmm. but I got a text message in church that a guy's uh, had a, a pipe freeze in one of his investment properties. Uh, Literally, I could show it to you on my phone yeah. here in Mason. Yeah. Um, well, we've had some cool days here. Yeah. Some damage yeah. that he sustained to an investment property. And so yeah. we're literally walking through that in real time mm -hmm. um, uh, with those families who say, hey, I need to put this house back together. I've got a tenant. Yeah. I've got all these oh, moving yes. parts. How do I navigate this? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's oh, the scoop. A lot so. of uh, yeah, I mean a lot of moving parts, and uh, like you said, it's it's continually evolving and changing. It's just of, a quick, fast uh, market. One of your questions that you asked, I know we we're talking about claims and investment properties, but yeah. how the market's changing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, insurance mm -hmm. carriers are really looking at frequency more than severity. Okay. All right, so it used to be a lot of a lot of people. General and at least used to be health insurance too, where you kind of use your health insurance as a maintenance policy. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. you would go for every sniffle, every cut. Well, now, whether it's your employer, you know, they increased your deductibles, HSA got introduced. Mm -hmm. So now it's like more catastrophic care. Well, okay. Insurance policies are, for, moving, in are moving in that same direction. Oh, so you can really get dinged, like, hey, I had a, you know, my gutter pulled mm -hmm. away from my house. I've got a little bit of stainage. I'm going to claim that. Well, then maybe you have a wind damage and you claim that. So if you get two or three of those, mm -hmm. you know, under your belt, it can really adversely, adversely affect affects. your ability so, to secure coverage. Yeah. Which brings me to a question. Yeah. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to ask two questions. Yeah, go for it. So my first question is, I've been in my house 20 years. Oh boy. I've had three claims over those 20 years. Is it a disservice for me to stay in my house? <laughs> Do I need to move so that I now yeah. have no claims? Yeah. Because I'm like over 20 years, we really right. it's not been bad. Yeah. What? But, it's kind of like mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like Vegas. Those claims <laughs> they don't stay in Vegas. They do follow you home. So even if you oh, move, okay. oh, they're, they're still there, gonna. There's these large reporting. I mean, one was the hurricane. We yeah, had yeah. Come 2008, through, right? Ike, yeah. one of the worst years of my life. Yeah. yeah literally, like lived and breathed at my office, settling yeah. wind claims. But as a result of that how wind claims get settled now, particularly in the Midwest, has mm -hmm. changed dramatically. Um, there were so many wind claims after Ike in 08 and 09, right. even into 10, right. Right. that now when you have wind, those claims get really scrutinized okay. by every insurance carrier. So if you have an older roof, yeah. um, you know, they used to replace those, but now yeah. insurance carriers have changed their language where they're depreciating those roofs because they're like, right. hey, we realized after Ike, we replaced a lot of 30 year old roofs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so right. insurance carriers are like, hey, we're not in the home maintenance business. Right. Those roofs should have been maintained by the homeowner, but obviously they're expensive. That's a yeah. really, other than your HVAC, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the roof mm -hmm. is like the number yeah. one thing and windows. Yeah. Roof, windows, mm -hmm. and HVAC are the yeah, three exactly. biggest ticket items. Mm -hmm apart from renovating something interior, like that's mm -hmm. a big home maintenance spend. Yeah, right. Um, so no, right. stay in your house. Okay. <laughs> build equity. I'm not an investment oh, yeah, guy. Yeah. Build there, is, there is a plan there. Yeah. Yes. Build yeah. as much equity as you can. Stay there. Do all the, you got to renovate the way you want, like live in it like you're going to live there till you die. But you don't know? because you need Chris well, yeah, to you help do. you move yeah. on. <laughs> I should be True. moving. Are you, but are you an empty nester? No? Yeah, okay. empty nester. Yeah, yeah. I've got the big yeah. four bedroom, two story. And, yes. and yeah. you know, we live in two rooms of the house, yeah. maybe three oh, yeah. tops. Um, uh, and, and we both work from, my husband and I both work from home primarily. So I'll say we live in four rooms of the house. Um, but it, and we're not planning to move. I'm gonna have to help her move sometime soon. Yeah. <laughs> but it is something that I think about is, um, you know, I look as as uh, my clients are moving into their home and looking at sure. what causes the what prices their insurance. Right. That's and, where inspections are so huge. Yeah. The thing yeah. that we always miss mm -hmm. at closing, and I'm constantly calling the listing agent. 
hey, do you know how old the roof is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know when the HVAC's been updated? Yeah. So as the buyer, yeah. those are two big things that can really help drive your insurance mm-hmm. costs down. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Or, so oh, that well, was my was second question yeah. is, right, we're working with clients and whether it be an investment client or somebody who's buying an owner-occupied home, what are the considerations that go into the cost of their insurance? Yeah, sure. Um, you're going to laugh when I say this now, but whether or not it has a basement, you know, okay. you think oh. about, uh, you know, again, in the Midwest, mm-hmm. you know, you were just, you said you're just in Arizona. So a slab or a basement? No basements, difference. right? No basements oh, there's out no west basement. in Florida, okay. nowhere. But uh, you think about water backup coverage and mm-hmm. all the different nuances that come mm-hmm. with whoever thought that we're going to pump water into your house so we can pump it out. That still boggles <laughs> my mind a little bit. But <laughs> when you have a house that has a basement, that mm-hmm. changes and is often an overlooked thing, whether it's finished or not, mm-hmm. people don't think about the cost to clean up if something mm-hmm. happens to that yeah. mm-hmm. Uh I have been, uh, we, we were in our house nine months and our, our sump pump backed up mm-hmm. and it's a mess. Like uh, it's just such a disruption yeah. to your mm-hmm. life. The and floors, the ceiling, floors, the drywall, yeah, you, you yeah. name it. And thankfully this was like rainwater, not sewage water. Mm-hmm. And sewage is a whole different kind of animal. <laughs> yes. mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, buying those houses, obviously. And this guy I referenced to the claim, the house is on a slab. Okay. Mm-hmm. It'll be a lot easier to see because water is going to find the lowest point, mm-hmm. right? So whether it's a leaky, uh, a leaky dishwasher or mm-hmm. refrigerator, I mean, it's going to go to the basement. Mm-hmm. So thankfully in this instance, you know, he doesn't have to clean up a basement, but um, whether or not you have a basement is big. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So there's certain general criteria. That... I think so. I mean, not that you're going to preclude that as a yeah. buying mm-hmm. option right. if you're an mm-hmm. investor. Right. But it's certainly something that mm-hmm. you want to make certain you've got covered because a lot of people like those. You know, yeah. It's not a basement. It's a lower level. Yeah. It's a right. living space right. that people it, spend yeah. a lot of time in yeah. now. It's square footage. It's, it's square, square footage. It is square footage. Yeah, yeah, we just we just finished ours. You have to come over and I know. take a look at it sometime. But yeah, I hear our, all about it. <laughs> our kids spend a lot of time down there, so yeah. you want to protect that. Yeah. Right. Um, so and that can be an attractive thing for somebody who's buying investment property. So you want to make certain, like, hey, do I can I put this all back together if something mm-hmm. happens? Yeah. Um, but yeah, aging. I mean, again, we have to recalibrate how we tell stories mm-hmm. because it used to be, oh, 20 years ago, we're like, man. It's actually 40 years ago. <laughs> you know, somebody said the uh, the, uh, the age between you know us and 1970 is the same age between 1970 and 1918. Did I saw that. that re- I did. I did, and oh, it just blew God. my mind. Right? I know. Yeah. Don't make me feel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so that's the biggest thing is like if you're going to own an asset, it's going to mm-hmm. appreciate in value. Mm-hmm. You got to make just like your car. Mm-hmm. You got to do all those. Ma- you got to change your oil. Right. Mm-hmm. You got to. You know, check your brake pads. Mm-hmm. Same thing with, with your house. Yeah, those, yeah. Are, those are all oh, So point. how much yeah. does like the clue, um, like what is a clue report and how does yeah. that affect it? Oh, comprehensive loss underwriting evaluation. <laughs> I think is what that clue, sounds good. That's what clue that stands good. Wait, for. In, a, in a purchase contract, it's the clue, the clue report. I bomb. I'm going to bomb this. <laughs> yeah, and, and for your driving, it'd be motor vehicle report, NBR. Yeah. Yeah, but but clue report. What's nice about that is you can see claims from the prior owner. Mm-hmm. So I know oftentimes those things have to be disclosed. Mm-hmm. But if it's right. something small, maybe it doesn't get disclosed, but mm-hmm. pops up mm-hmm. on a clue report. Right. So we've we found some things where, you know, whether it was a leak, it, it, it just and it's so broad because that report will say water damage. Yeah. Was well, that from a toilet? Right. Was that from a dishwasher? Right. 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 Yeah. It's hard to, you know, to determine. My main thing, and, and I'll shout it from the mountaintops, whenever somebody buys a house, go in and replace every supply line with a braided metal line. So whether it's your ice maker on your refrigerator or your dishwasher, oh. usually they come with a plastic yeah. line. Yeah. A okay. plastic line. Okay. Those things, because, you know, they you're snap. moving your, well, they're just so brittle yeah. over time. Huh. So yeah. I say, check all your supply lines, call your plumber. It's, Replace them all with a braided metal. I'm gonna have it's to, unbelievable yeah. the damage right that, that water can do. It, yeah. it, it is just a small little trickle. I had mm-hmm. a, a client who it was a refrigerator uh-huh. that was moved, and they were moving in, and this this teeny mm-hmm. tiny little trickle of water in like 12 hours created a huge. I'm gonna show you mess. pictures of mold when we're finished here of a basement that had a leak in their kitchen that was unaddressed. And you cannot believe how ex- I mean wow. it's a forty thousand dollar mold remediation job wow. as a result of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's that's big. 
That's big. So are there different types of riders that can be added to policies if you have, you know, certain situations? I mean, I know, okay, so if you're in a floodplain, obviously you need yeah. flood insurance, right. but are there other things like that that you should consider most add-ons? Yeah, yeah. Or is in Ohio, covered? yeah, in Ohio, there's a like kind of a general contract that's mm -hmm. governed by the state. Mm -hmm. And then there, like you said, there are tack-ons. So there's yeah. enhancements that you can add. And usually... Uh, a bunch of enhancements get bundled together in okay. one endorsement that okay. adds a lot of stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. But even separate from that, again, talking about older homes, mm -hmm. uh, one of the new things that they've just added, and especially in Lexington Park, um, is Ooh, uh, trees yeah. Trees are getting bigger, right? <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah. service line coverage yeah. is a big thing. So oh. tree roots growing oh, into yeah. wires and pipes and all that thing. We've had, I mean, you could spend ten to $20,000 right. digging up your yard well, on newer neighborhoods, you don't necessarily have to worry about that. But on right. more mature neighborhoods right. that have a lot of big trees, yeah, huge problem. And so, again, the insurance industry responded with an endorsement called yeah. service line coverage, where okay. now you can add that on. So if you have an existing policy, yeah. you don't know this. No. What you should you yeah, do? Boy. Right. <laughs> I, again, I own an independent agency, uh -huh. so I will shout out from the mountaintops. I love that you know you have captives, yeah. uh, State Farm, Nationwide, yeah. Allstate. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of the independent system. Mm -hmm. It's the system I grew up in. But regardless of whether or not you have an independent agent or a captive agent, mm -hmm. have a relationship with that person. Mm -hmm. Like feel comfortable mm -hmm. calling them other than to pay your bill mm -hmm. to say, hey, here's the situation yeah. I'm mm -hmm. dealing with. Yeah. Give me as much advice mm -hmm. as I can. Again, a buddy of mine, uh, Brandon Smith, he's an agent in Missoula, Montana. He always says the difference between uh, a contract and a contact is the letter R, and that's relationship. It's like mm -hmm. you want to know your the agent. person who's protecting your most valuable assets. That's so yeah. have that's that conversation for sure. So um, every how often should you sit down with your insurance agent to review yeah, your, really. your policy? I mean, as a general rule, kind of any big life event. I okay. would say like okay. if you're buying a car, my oldest son, and mm -hmm. you may yes. be here soon. Um, <laughs> I used to well, only- Well, your oldest son is driving around on my son these yes. days. <laughs> I used to only be able to talk in theory and yeah. commiserate with people. I'm so sorry <laughs> that your insurance is going, but now I've got a driver. And so you can fully expect, I mean, anybody that's got a young driver, tell you it's, i had it's, two boys it's two thousand dollars extra a year it's it's, you know, it's, it's significant it's significant whether well, son or daughter yeah um, but youthful operators are really expensive yeah. and yeah. so life especially but, boys especially <laughs> boys but back to your question any kind of life event yeah, so okay. job change uh renovation mm -hmm. uh maybe you're thinking about moving or buying a new car or you're investing in mm -hmm. property i mean yeah, those many are of really... us don't know if we're adequately covered because yeah. you know uh, to chris's point you've been in your house for you 20 said it, years it. Right. right it hasn't right. caused you a problem haven't revisited it right. exactly and yeah. so um yeah these are all good tips <laughs> you, you think you're good yeah. right and sure and so but, you have but things disaster. do change and absolutely the, the point about the trees right we even think from an inspection perspective. Mm -hmm. If you're buying a house in Madeira, a hundred year old house or Hyde Park, I'm going to suggest a sewer scope, right? I would never think of one in my neighborhood, but right. you're right. We've got those big trees. Mm -hmm. Huge trees. Huge mm -hmm. trees. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah. And not only that, but when you look at a house and you see big limbs or like yeah. even talking about tree trimming. Yeah. You know, like cause off, that's an expensive thing that we don't typically do in our homes. Right. But if you're buying a house, mm -hmm. that would be yeah. one of the main things that I would consider is like, hey, I want the owner to trim those trees back. Right. Yeah. You know, that's a big thing. That is good. It, it comes up on every inspection report, whether or not, you know, you ask for it or not. Mm -hmm. I guess if it doesn't get done by the seller, it should get done by the buyer. For sure. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so nowadays every insurance policy like that we write the carrier actually sends somebody out to do an exterior inspection. So we've oh, even I've caught heard things. Of that. Okay. We've okay. even caught things that mm -hmm. were maybe missed when we wrote the policy mm -hmm. that maybe a shingle's cupped or maybe you see some you don't see something in warm weather that you see in cold weather. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so definitely. again seasons can reveal things mm -hmm. in a different way. Mm -hmm. If you bought a house in the winter Maybe it masked a smell, or if you bought a house in summer, maybe you know. So Good those point. those Vice types of things can can kind of creep up on you mm -hmm. as you live in a house and, and get to know it. So so let's say uh, you are interested, or a homeowner is interested in exploring other carriers. Yeah. What do they need to supply you with in order to get a quote? <clears throat> in in our for our age, and this has been really tough because 
you guys have a lot of relationships and all of them are built on trust mm -hmm. and transparency. And right. so we've actually gotten to the point now where we don't do it perfectly. We don't do it every time, but we always want to see the person's existing policy always mm -hmm. every time. And a lot of times people are unwilling to provide that mm -hmm. because they feel guarded or they don't want to yeah. see, you know, I wish I had control over pricing that I can yeah. say, hey, Dean is a great friend. I'm going to give her the friend and we just can't. All but right. that's still a, a perception that oh, you might not give me the best price or maybe you'll just save me enough to make me want to switch. But if we're going to build relationships on trust, I always say, hey, you may have a great policy and it may be priced really competitively. Mm -hmm. And if it is, I'm going to tell you that. Right. But I want to see it. I mm -hmm. want to see where the deficiencies yeah. are and then make recommendations and do kind of compare and contrast. Yeah. I hate doing everybody says, well, just give me apples to apples. Well, what if your apples like a crummy apple. Right. <laughs> right. Or you know? what if your apples don't include the sun pump? Exactly. Sure. What, or, you know, or so, to the point where you haven't reviewed your policy. Right. We never we never give years. an apples to apples yeah. comparison. I think that yeah. you're doing your people a disservice. Yeah. You know? But any kind of prospect the person you hope is a customer, you really not doing a great job and say. Good point. So it's just about sitting down, having a conversation and yep. providing. Get a good picture about, you know, why are you policy. looking to, why are you looking to switch? Is it mm -hmm. just price? Because mm -hmm. if you ask people, I know we're all price sensitive, mm -hmm. yeah. but usually they want a good value. Right. Like they want the best policy at the lowest price. And so well, really get to the heart of. And, and I think know. values a, a good word, right? Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, oftentimes I, I don't care if it's the cheapest, if I have an issue, that's what matters sure. to me and and you know how is that treatment versus so that cost cost Absolutely. versus value is huge huge mm -hmm. huge yeah so that's usually where we start and then we have a series of kind of intake questions for some reason this past year we had a ton of dog bites oh really, really? Know, yes i don't know if people were just out walking more because of covid or or maybe i know a lot of people bought how does dogs that even COVID. file a claim is that a Oh uh, yeah. Okay. So so if you're uh, I was bitten by a dog on a walk. Yeah. So your personal life. I I own a dog. You own a dog. Mm -hmm. Do you own a dog? I used to. Okay. So our dog. We live in a corner. All right. And we're one fence away from a dog park. Some days. I mean. And Lucy's very playful. We have tons of dogs coming our in our in our yard to play. With. We had a line of they people have a waiting for one day. Lucy's, Lucy's a popular girl. Yeah. But, but I also, yeah, but, but uh, if she were to bite somebody, that yeah. falls under my homeowner's insurance. Interesting. Yeah, so even if your homeowner's liability follows you around wherever you go. Okay. So even if I'm at the park yeah. uh, and Lucy were to do something to someone, my homeowner's liability would extend. So, okay. Yeah. So let me ask this. Sure. I told you I'll get off on a tangent. No, no, no. So my dog at one point has was attacked by two different dogs. Yeah. Um, you know, one in his yard broke off his leash to attack my dog. We probably could have 100 had them claim that. Absolutely. Interesting. I mean, this has been a couple a number of years the ago. The things at this you point. don't know if you don't but sit down with your insurance because agent. Right, I'll right, tell you, yes. emergency. Right. That, 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 was ex, that was expensive. expensive. And, yeah. you know, the one, uh, wow. I mean, in both cases, my husband and I were each bitten and we were fine. Oh, my yeah. gosh. But right. we were each bitten, two different incidents, two different dogs. Interesting. Yeah. Never even crossed our mind. Considered sure. that it yeah. might be. Now, how is um, that? Is that? different than an umbrella policy or what is an umbrella policy? yeah so i would say think about how umbrella an umbrella policy and i, I love the word umbrella because it literally is over <laughs> i know i have one but yeah. i don't know what it means yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> so it, it's over and above the stuff that you have okay so if if something really catastrophic were to happen your umbrella mm -hmm. would drop down okay to provide additional coverage so but it, it is a little cover bit cover different things it's yeah. just above and beyond coverage. above and beyond so it is okay. a little bit broader in some things so um we we've had uh again we have social media now mm -hmm. um so you think about uh defamation claims mm -hmm. uh people making comments about other people and then saying mm -hmm. hey i was deflamed by somebody or slandered right um, right oh my gosh know, we, God. We could, oh people, my gosh people can get sued for different, and that's where an umbrella so that's where the umbrella okay. policy would be a great in. thing to have to protect yourself if, huh. if you mm. get a little mouthy one day you know so <laughs> Ooh, me you guys are all, all looking at me I, we just met no. i'm not gonna make, not gonna make any presumptions like so, I, I, do, I do love and that's the part of my job that i think is really rewarding yeah um again whether it's a, a fire a car wreck 
a death. Well, it's pretty uh, you, fascinating all the things you, you don't know. Name it. Um, and I'm and our agency in general, we're pretty hands on. And mm -hmm. hey, real quick, I don't know if you guys get the Deerfield Mason magazine, but we were voted best agency oh, nice. in, the, in the North. So that's a little <laughs> plug there. So yeah, we, yeah, we don't. I mean, we we'll plug I, away. I did vote on that. But that's a vote. <laughs> that's a vote for people. Uh, yeah. In the in the community. So that was a huge uh, huge awesome. honor to get that. That's great. Congratulations. So, yeah, that's thank excellent. You. Congratulations. Yeah. And so. Chris and I really enjoy obviously meeting new businesses, mm -hmm. um, local small businesses, and that's a big component of of what we do here right, um, right. on our podcast. And so we love that you're so integrated in that Mason community and in yeah. the Cincinnati community mm -hmm. as well. We, we, it's a great place to sell insurance and mm -hmm. sell homes. Like we got a lot of great people. So yeah, lots of fun. Well, good. So going back to these claims, you were telling Chris earlier that she doesn't she should move because he <laughs> I don't claims, have to move have because to of move. my because claims. Claim, right. Because of her claims that right. she's filed <laughs> over time. But how long do they actually follow you? Is yeah. there a different time? carriers take different approaches to that? If okay. you uh, if you have some houses, unfortunately, just have ongoing water issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen that where mm -hmm. basements are just wet, mm -hmm. whether right. no matter how much drainage they put in, whatever right. the case is. And so uh, depending on the carrier, they'll look at that history and say, man, this house just has a history of water mm -hmm. claims. What's going on? So yeah. it really is uh, for carriers that are more hands on. They'll take a, you know, you become less two dimensional looking at a piece of paper and they want right. to know. Yeah, That's why like. it's important for the agent to have a good relationship with that company, because we've actually saved people from getting canceled mm -hmm. by calling an underwriter and say, hey, well, here's what's going on with their house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was a sump up claim, but this one was. Hey, the dishwasher. Right. You know, right, leaked. Right. it was a one off kind of thing. Right, you got a new right. dishwasher. It wasn't related. It wasn't related. Mm -hmm. um, but usually it's three to five years. You know, three to five oh. years is how so, long I look at those. Yeah. Well, oh, the, that's comforting. Yeah. Because <laughs> ours are all past, yeah. past that. Right. You right. Know? Now um, you can still benefit. So, houses that do have newer roofs, mm -hmm. there are many carriers out there who mm -hmm. give a discount for mm -hmm. if your home, uh, roof was put on in the last 15 years, mm -hmm. um, they usually give some kind of a discount related to that. Mm -hmm. so. Even adding, I think adding the second sun pump for us made a difference. Okay. All right. Again, I, every carrier, kind of a snowflake. Kind they, of different. Can, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. No. Very but interesting. I always say, you know, uh, home security monitoring systems. Mm -hmm. uh, so that benefits you. That, that benefits you. Okay. There's actually a new device now. A lot of carriers will give a, uh, if you, if they'll detect a water leak. Oh, you wow. You know, in your basement where there's a, that shut off valve. Yeah. There's a lot of really great technology out there that, again, Bluetooth or wireless. Mm -hmm. where oh, wow. It will detect it. It kind of learns how your house runs mm -hmm. and can detect if water's running consistently. Wow. It'll tell you like, hey, there's a leak somewhere. And so sometimes those leak yeah. detection devices can yeah. save you money on your insurance. So adding those things then can benefit you on your in your policy. Oh, yeah. policy. And just think about long-term costs oh, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Anytime you have a claim, I mean, insurance is the transfer of risk, mm -hmm. right? That's yeah. literally mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. But it's always inconvenient. I mean, <laughs> insurance is designed to make you whole, you hope you but it's need. never fun to go through it. Right. You know, right. It's never right. fun to get new carpet if something leaks or yeah, a roof. Exactly. Like, it's always inconvenient. Yeah. So we try to make it as smooth as possible. But all of those things to mitigate that yeah. will make life a lot easier. For how sure. do we, how do you hook up with that? Then? Yeah, there are a couple that, of different providers different out there. Providers. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's we have cool. a we have a list of things that we kind of kind of add like uh, mm -hmm. generators, you know, generate because if you lose power, oh, now all yeah. of a sudden your sump pump isn't working. You all your you lose all your food in your freezer. Right. So Nick, we need carriers, to talk. Carriers, <laughs> reward. We, we need to now, sit down and review. <laughs> some of these things are more expensive upgrades to a yeah. home than right. just you know a smoke mm -hmm. detector. Right. Um, but right. some of them, if you've got you know if you're running big equipment or you've got a detached mm -hmm. garage like people are okay investing yeah. in that kind of thing yeah so, interesting yeah um let's uh, we've been talking about comparing investment properties versus owner yeah. occupied is there a different preparation i would expect that there would be a different liability and cost what are some of those differences? Yeah, so in general, investment properties, because the owner isn't living in them, mm -hmm. there's usually a, a increased risk and a little bit increased cost. Mm -hmm. And so um, really, because somebody else is living there, the due diligence for the owners on the front end. So again, 
having a lease mm -hmm. that gives the owner of the property more control. You know, I, let's say you're renting a property from me that mm -hmm. I own. I really, and let's say I allow animals, mm -hmm. all right? I really want to make certain that you have liability to cover your animal. Got it. Because if your dog bites somebody mm -hmm. in my house, mm -hmm. there's a potential that I could become liable for that. Oh, right. Wow. Got okay. it. Got it. Okay. You know? and yeah. So, so they so need to have that liability. To, renter to make sure that the renter has Absolutely. Or looking so at the lease to so make sure from, that the renter yeah. has yeah, to have from, that. Apart from just insurance costs, yeah. having proper landlord liability okay. to make certain that you're protected for the acts of your tenant. You know, mm -hmm. they're in a house that you own. Mm -hmm. um, you really, really, really need to hone in. To, it's a lot to think about. <laughs> and that's why a lot of people, you know, do a lease on a handshake or mm -hmm. leases are a lot of work to manage. But if mm -hmm. you're going to really get into investment property, mm -hmm. having a lease reviewed by an attorney okay. is critical to give you the outs that you need if, if they don't pay rent or whatever the case is. So, right. Uh, I'm glad um, to hear you say that because yeah. um, with s some investors, like I, I'm, I'm pretty adamant about, you know, for your protection as as one of my investors, I really do want you to talk to an attorney and get something done. And, you know, they're hesitant sometimes mm -hmm. to spend 250 bucks, right. which is sure. something that could protect them oh, tremendously. Huge. And you yeah. just that's a your point about the insurance is yeah. huge. Yeah, we and we've got some people who have large portfolios of mm -hmm. property and they have all of those controls in mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but the, the probably the most overlooked one because again, it takes more time and effort mm -hmm. for the property owner. Is hey, you want that person to have insurance to mm -hmm. protect their stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, um, that's a biggie. But landlord liability again, I always say, and, and now I don't know what kind of advice you give on having a uh, an LLC versus having an, in a, a personal name. Again, that's just another layer of legal protection mm -hmm. for that buyer. But again, that's more work. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another. Yeah. Um, that's more tax work and tracking mm -hmm. things, but I think from an insurance standpoint, you're protecting you and your family. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so Sounds all like of those things are, are very, very necessary. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But from an insurance cost standpoint, mm -hmm. um, very, a lot of similarities between okay. that and a homeowner policy. Okay. okay. So not, um, not but again, you're assuming more liability for somebody that is living in a house that you, yeah, yeah. That yeah. you don't have any control over. That's exactly. Control. Yeah. Or that, limited control. That makes sense. Yeah. So what if you're not a landlord, but you purchase a property as a, as a flipper? Per yeah. Se? Oh, yeah. Are there short term policies? Yeah, or big you just, it, right? You yeah, own. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah. a policy and a short term you, policy. That's an yeah. interesting there are, it's a, it's a, it's It's been around for a while, but rarely used. Mm -hmm. um, there are some companies out there that will do like a three or six month mm -hmm. homeowner policy for a flat fee okay. with the understanding that the home's not going to be occupied. Okay. So again, we could really go down a rabbit hole with mm -hmm. the difference between uh, vacant and unoccupied. So in your in a, in an insurance contract, <laughs> okay. Okay. all right, there's a lot of very specific terms that are defined in okay. that. And so, um, insurance companies really harp on vacant homes that I mean they're in coverage can be excluded as a result of a mm -hmm. home being vacant mm -hmm. now so let's say now we vacant we're not going to call it vacant then we're going to call it you want to call it unoccupied uh, unoccupied got yeah. it right. unoccupied right. right it is um, different let's say you've got a, a seasonal resident mm -hmm. you've got people who have homes in mm -hmm. Tennessee Florida and uh, they may go in there for six months out of the year um, their home still has furniture they still yeah. pay a utility yeah. bill mm -hmm. you know all those things so it's just unoccupied um, but then there are homes that have nothing in them that are truly vacant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, that that's where coverage can really get can limited. Differ. Yeah, and so, but there are policies out there that provide broader coverage for vacant homes. So mm -hmm. if you're planning and you know it's going to be vacant, mm -hmm. I always say pay the extra money, mm -hmm. buy the proper policy to make certain it's going to be as broad as possible, mm -hmm. so that there is stuff that happens as a result of being vacant. You know, oh, maybe yeah. you, maybe yeah. you set the right. thermometer at 45 yeah. or 50 or mm -hmm. Varmin get in, whatever the case yeah. is. Yeah. Um, it is very different than a home that's unoccupied. That's got yeah. it. So. so you said that you rarely use short-term policies. Then. We do more and more. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. we do have some okay. people who do flips. So, like the full yeah, intention is like, it's gonna take me three months to yeah, renovate right, this right, thing. Right. So yeah, those those policies those are, are great and serve a very, very specific need. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. I had a whole nother direction I wanted to go and now my little mind is. Oh, so one of the questions and this is kind of that unoccupied versus occupied or transition is sometimes we have a house that sells 
and the seller keeps occupancy after closing for a yeah. week or two yeah, weeks. Yeah. Uh -huh. The buyer. So one of the questions we get quite frequently is who's responsible in that interim time frame? Yeah, so um, it's kind of like the same thing where you're selling a car. Like, so you're buying a car from a relative. There has to be what we call an insurable interest, mm -hmm. right? So you bought the, I no longer, if I sell it to you, I don't have an insurable interest anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, all everything's transferred to you. So really it's that buyer's responsibility to make certain they have, and, and usually the bank, unless it's a cash deal, which there are more and more cash deals out there uh, where a bank isn't going to ask. We'll talk about coverage. that in real talk. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the bank's going to want to see evidence of insurance okay. for the buyer. And so they're usually protected mm -hmm. there. Now for the seller, We've done this where we write a short-term renter's policy yeah, because there's yeah, stuff still sense. there. You still have their, still exactly. have. But oftentimes it's three days or seven yeah, days. Yeah, there'd be a yeah. small overlap. Yeah. Um, if they're already buying a new house and yeah. have new insurance, their contents coverage would mm -hmm. extend from that new homeowner mm -hmm. policy. It. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, there has to be insurable interest is the buzzword. Okay. You know, do and and that seller doesn't have an insurable interest anymore. So yeah. 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 That does that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Uh, what other types of insurance? I know we've talked about homeowners insurance and that's what we're zeroing in on, but what other types of insurance do you sell? Any kind of property and casualty products. So okay. home and auto insurance, umbrella. Okay. We mm -hmm. do life insurance. I do no financial planning, no health insurance. The okay. health insurance landscape has it's changed so much. A, a lot of great specialists mm -hmm. that handle that. Yeah. And then we do business insurance. So contractors, manufacturing, a lot of white collar, dentists, okay. optometrists, mm -hmm. veterinarians. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of our, our bread and butter. Investment property owners, any kind of habitational risk, For somebody sure. that's got a portfolio. Mm -hmm. Of apartments, mm -hmm. um, the commercial building we're sitting in, um, all restaurants, you name it. So, our agency, I'd say we're a generalist. Um, we have the ability to write all kinds of would call it, fall into the property mm -hmm. and casualty space. So, and if you bundle different insurance products, oh yeah. do you typically get a better rate? You 100% do. Okay. And, I, and I always discourage people from trying to split them up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Again, you're doing yourself a disservice in the long term. Plus, there's too many people you have to build relationships with. Right, right. Person, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're spot on. You're spot on. That's that's the best part is you know trying to make insurance and real estate less transactional mm -hmm. yeah. and really relational. Like we want to have people as clients for mm -hmm. five, ten, twenty years. And the best part is we do have those generational. Like yeah. four or five generations yeah. of families yeah. now yeah. Uh, in our agency, which is so so fun to to yeah. see. And um, it's like, yo, I remember when you got an accident. You're 16 now. You're <laughs> you're 30 with your own kids. And, and um, so yeah, those are great. Those yeah. big scary thoughts. Yeah. What is the if somebody wants to review their insurance or needs insurance? What's the best way to get in touch with you? They or can call our agency. Company? We got a great website. Years ago, yeah. my partner had the foresight to buy mason-ohio.com. Oh, so isn't that smart? So smart? senior, so senior that family smart? insurance, as, uh, uh, our partners, our founding partners are two amazing families, but sometimes people butcher how to spell senior and Flaherty. Well, yes. So, yeah. Senior, senior. Yeah, yeah, a couple of ways to pronounce it. So uh, our, our website is mason-ohio.com or senior-flaherty.com and then you can request a quote right there or, okay. uh, or reach us through our website or mm -hmm. our phone number so yeah awesome excellent mm -hmm. is there anything that we haven't uh, uncovered oh, that you wanted to share with our no you guys were great today you, no thank you so much for having and me and you've been so I thorough know, so, I know. It's so like, obviously it's, our small business shout out of the week is senior flaherty insurance and nick bogan and yeah it's great, great. No, again you guys are all about building and sustaining yeah, relations that's the yeah. biggest takeaway yeah. is like have whether it's me or whoever feel comfortable calling that person mm -hmm. yeah to, mm -hmm. to have some really heartfelt conversations well, to we make need to certain talk. you're protected <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because you've given me a lot to think about today there yeah. you a know, lot to think about we think of it in terms of our transactions and our sure. and our sales and our you know buying and selling but um yeah. there's just so much more involved there isn't there mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, thank That's you again. Cool. Thank well, you. thank you. We appreciate having you. Yeah, great. Okay, Bye. and a final shout out goes to Nick Bogan with Senior Flannerty Insurance. And I just learned so much today about the insurance world. Um, we're really happy to have Nick on the program. Hope you get some great value out of it as much as we did. And we got great, great value 
great information and great hats. Hats, everybody. So thanks, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Nick. So if you are watching us on YouTube, we've got our cool new Senior Flaherty hats, hats. on today. Yeah, yeah, we sure do. Such so. the hat person that I am. <laughs> so switching gears, Dina and, thought, Dina and I thought we'd just give you a little briefing on what the market is currently doing. Um, we are at the end of January, getting into February. Um, so what is going on? I know, Dina, you just came off of a very busy weekend. Yeah, I mean, it's really these last two weeks of January have just kicked in high gear. Um, lots of irons in the fire, but specifically, Chris, I listed a property over the weekend that um, just in a matter of a couple of days got 46 showings. Oh my goodness. And the only reason those showings stopped was because we put a cutoff in mm -hmm. there that we were only accept accepting contracts up to a certain time. Um, and got about eight, ten, ten, eight or 10 contracts mm -hmm. um, that we'll need to review. Uh, probably would have gotten a lot more. I'm glad to not have more, quite right. honestly. Right, But How um, overwhelming for a seller. Very overwhelming for sellers these days. Um, and, you know, the thing is, uh, with buyers, it's so hard for these buyers because they don't, you know, they don't want to compete with that many offers. Mm -hmm. They just don't feel like they have a chance. Mm -hmm. um, so they may or may not, you know, write an offer. Um, but this property in particular, you know, as we've been talking about investments, um, you know, it'll make a great home for somebody, but it would also be prime for an investor. Got it. So Got it. it was interesting to see the difference in the offers come through. Right. Some right. of them. Because a different strategy. Different strategy. Different so strategy. some of them were, you know, cash offers. Others are FHA. Mm -hmm. Others are conventional. Mm -hmm. So you've got contracts across the board that um, are really varying because it is it is more of a, a prime investor mm -hmm. property. So yeah, that was a busy weekend. Yeah. yeah. And you've got a lot going on. First uh, off, before we even get to your clients and all these busy buyers, we have to congratulate you. Well, thank you. Because you are now a grandma. I have the newest title. <laughs> it is grandma. And um, I, I got to go spend a week out in Arizona and spend time with my son and his wife and their new baby, Leo. So um, it's baby been wonderful. Leo. That's awesome. It's great. And then you had to come back and you hit the ground running. <laughs> hit the ground running. I, it, whole debacle getting back, but um, it got back in the early morning, Sunday morning and hit the ground running Sunday to show properties. Um, and I, I've been working with uh, several buyers. And I'll tell you, the beginning of 2022, I felt like we were getting a little reprieve. Mm -hmm. Homes were actually sitting on the market for just a hot minute. Yeah. You could actually breathe. Um, I don't know what happened this weekend, but I came home to, Dean, exactly what yeah. you were saying. Um, one property that I saw with my clients, first off, we were even having a hard time getting in. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the agent shared, she's like, we've had over 40 showings in two days yeah, and nine offers just even at that point. And I'm like, there's one house where they even cut off showings because right. they're like, at some point, enough is enough and right so you know my heart goes out to these buyers because you can't even get in a home there's there's so many people yeah there with covid um you know they can put restrictions on the home yeah um as as far as the number of people mm -hmm. going through the home so you really have to be flexible if you're a buyer um, and you know if in. your client works yeah, they can't i know take off work to I, jump and see these homes and other people can my heart goes out to these it's buyers crazy. it's really challenging it's a challenging yeah. time so yeah in these last couple of weeks i agree i mean we just like went all in <laughs> yeah yeah and what do you think any what are um, some of your thoughts well a couple of things i mean one you know i think it's it is typical this time of year because mm -hmm. we start to slow down there around thanksgiving everybody's more preoccupied with the holidays yes. um and then come january I, I can't even tell you how many people were calling me at the end of january or at the end of december saying come january we are thinking about moving mm -hmm. so i've had just in the last couple of weeks um so many conversations and listing appointments 
with yes. people getting ready to put their homes on the market because it is amping up. It's that time. And I will say year. that's a big difference I'm seeing too is the number of people and it gives me hope who are considering listing their yeah, home. Yeah, I now. hope so, right? Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, I call it light switch day yeah. and it keeps coming up in my Facebook memories, right? Hey, it's light switch day. Yeah. It's the day that the light switch goes on for real estate. So you're right. I, I think it's a little typical. You know, I, I think this, um, we continue to be short on inventory. For sure. And I, I think that makes it compelling too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the lack of inventory out there, it's been the same song we've been singing <laughs> uh, for some time. Uh, we hope to have more. If you are thinking about selling your house, now is the time though, because some yeah. things are changing. Um, interest rates, interest are rates went up. up. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think buyers are running out because now they're panicked. Yeah that they're not gonna be able to get into the house they want. Yeah, they're making, um, they're really looking at things um, from the perspective that they'd rather get in now than later mm -hmm. because your your buying power is is less, right? It, it does, it, so, it goes down as the interest rates go up. Yeah, so in a, in a couple of weeks, um, we'll be actually looking at interest <laughs> rates and talking with Kathy Lamb and mm -hmm. I'll be excited to hear more about what she has about the interest rates. So we'll table and that conversation. Thinking about but, that, we've been talking a lot about investment properties. Mm -hmm. It's going to be one of our themes this year. Kathy will, will address that too. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things I do want to point out though is we keep talking about this compelling market. And so I pulled today how many new listings came on the market in the past seven days. Mm -hmm. And from a residential perspective, there are about 400. Um, and 186 of them are under contract. So 50% are under contract. Are under contract. That came on the market when? Within the past seven days. Oh, okay. All so right. there's no the other 50%, mm -hmm. and, and that it are... may be that they listed yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, not very many homes list over the weekend, but there are 50% of them that are still out there. That are still out there. Okay. And so, you know, it is um, important that maybe as a seller, you're, you're doing things correctly and, and that pricing is still important. That condition is still important right. because buyers are not buying everything. They're not buying everything. They're all there. going to the same house. <laughs> but it is a revolving door. It is a revolving door. <laughs> and you will see the same buyers yeah. over and over again, right? So what do you think of this market? What, what do you... Uh, like what are your pointers for a seller? Uh, if you're a seller, I would say sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, I'd most, agree with most that. Most definitely. Um, you don't think that the rates, you know, are going to affect you. Maybe you're not, you know, maybe you're moving out of state. Mm -hmm. Maybe your, you know, situation is, is changing, but it's going to affect that buyer. Right. So really the, the biggest bang for anybody's buck is like, sooner rather than yeah, later yeah. as those rates change and um you know preparing your house like you said um not taking you know months to prepare it but doing those small things now to get your house mm -hmm. fixed up ready in in show condition is um, going to really help add value too. Yeah. Because values are climbing, they're creeping up. Um, but, you know, like right now I've got a seller who's going to put a roof on their house. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got a 30 year old mm -hmm. home. They don't have any leaks, mm -hmm. but they're going to put a roof on because, you know, that's important. It's and that's important. a wise. So, and that is yeah. a good, good yeah. selling point yeah. of a home. Yeah. So love that. Great points. So don't wait till March. Don't wait till March. Um, you know, Call and we now. we never <laughs> we never know. I mean, we've been hopeful for six years that this listing inventory is going to start to switch a little bit. We know we Dina and I've seen it. We know it's going to happen at some right, point. Right. And so, um, you know, who knows when, but it will happen at some point. So yeah. sell sell as quickly as possible. So what do you think that means for the buyer? So for the buyers, gosh, I think so many things. Um, probably it, my my first piece of advice is be 100% prepared, other than use Dina and I. Um, <laughs> That's the first know, piece of advice. Be 100% <laughs> prepared for both um, having all your financials in line and your strategies yeah, for what you're going to do with a home. I agree. Have those conversations with your agents. Um, know where you're going to go, um, you know, where you want to go and what your, your plan is. And, you know, not just the pre-approval, but we've talked about this so many times mm -hmm. in the past, but having that um, conditional approval 
only be contingent upon you know the mm -hmm. appraisal of mm -hmm. the property by taking those extra steps and providing all your documentation and getting yourself approved i can't tell you how many people i had that conversation with over the weekend with these uh, mm -hmm. people that wanted to buy this this property who hadn't even been pre-approved yet um that are competing with cash offers right but that's your right. best way to do it is to get yourself fully underwritten yeah, yeah yeah and and when i talk about those strategies too it's the you know there's things like um can i cover an appraisal gap can mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um it, it is an escalation clause a, an opportunity for me um and and so knowing what direction you might go and it might be different for different houses right, right? with right. my buyers we've taken different strategies on on different houses based on both the price within their price range and the property it, itself. Yeah, and, and their overall mm -hmm. like love of the property. Mm -hmm. How much are they willing to risk, put at risk, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For the right property. And so, probably my big advice is write your best offer. Your first, your first offer, just write the best offer. That's great and, advice. You know, know that somebody's going to offer the insane. Mm -hmm. And is that gonna be you? Mm -hmm. And And you know, it's, are, are you willing to write the insane to get a house? <laughs> That's great advice. <laughs> it's kind of funny advice, but it's uh, so it, true. And it so goes against my inner core of being like fiscally responsible and I know. And, and everything. But the bottom line is the bottom line is this is the market you can we're be in. fiscally responsible or you can buy a house and you're not going to get the house unless you're willing to explore yeah um all of those opportunities and all of those options yeah. and, and decide what you're willing to willing to how you're willing to put your mm -hmm. best foot forward mm -hmm. so and yeah. of course final one is go back to that's right. us that's right because we're going to sit down with you and go through all of it we do watch this market daily and know the little innuendos um again 50 percent of the homes listed last week did, haven't sold and so that is a different strategy and how can we incorporate that to help you and it's always changing it's always. so so fluid it's always changing so thanks for joining us today we welcome you to uh listen to our podcast join us uh next time who are we chatting with next time next Chris? time we are going to go to union village it is a really neat urban um urban suburban community be cool. um up in the L turtle creek yeah Lebanon in area yeah. it's a really neat con uh air concept uh, yes yeah. thank you yeah um really neat concept and um i think everybody's going to enjoy that awesome yeah thanks, thanks for joining us on house and home chat real estate real talk with dina and chris take Bye. care everybody